Great morning. We are back. We're back. We're back. I've got the amazing Shalena Ogumbi in the building with us today. Mm -hmm. She's the, co the founder and CEO of Social Boss Empire and Women and Wine Global. We've been talking about how you've been able to take your pain, turn it into a passion, mm -hmm. and get this internet money. Yep. Which is really exciting okay. because, you know, a lot of times um, people be online and be like, I, I don't want to be online like that, but oh. I want to get this money. Okay, that's a mood for me. Is it a mood? It's a mood. Tell, um, tell us why. Yeah, it just it, it does get exhausting. Um, I'm the type of person that definitely posts five to six times a day on each platform. Are that you, can be a lot. Are you planning mm -hmm. your posts or are you physically doing it each time? Yeah, so I do a little bit of both, yeah. honestly. It just depends on my schedule. I try to do them a couple weeks out. I used to have my content plan a couple months out. Mm -hmm. But just with the way that I get events kind of thrown at me and things mm -hmm. now, I want to be sure that I post everybody and do that. So I plan it out. Sometimes I sporadically post, so a little bit of both. But my clients, I definitely plan theirs. And definitely. so are you looking for new clients and what do you look for when you find them? Um, so my business has kind of pivoted. I am looking for new clients, but in a different light. I used to do full on social media management campaigns. So shoot everything, post everything, schedule everything for you, um, like a done for you service. And now I'm more consulting. So I'll let you know how to do it. I'll do it with you or teach you how to do these things. But also I've um, implemented event management and consulting into my business because now the events are taking off to just a new level where people, I don't know, people are forgetting that I do marketing now. They're like, oh, that's the event lady. I'm like, okay, God, if that's what you want me to do. So yes, new clients for consulting, event management, and just, you know, overall giving you the spill on how to do things. We talked about you and women in wine and things mm -hmm. like that. What challenges do you see female entrepreneurs facing in the digital space and mm -hmm. how can, how can communities like Women in Wine Global support yes. and empower them? Um, I oftentimes have to combat a stigma. When you're online as a woman, a lot of people don't realize that a lot of the girls that are quote unquote getting paid are showing something for it, but I'm not here for that, right? I wanna do it in a different light. I wanna keep it classy, I wanna keep it demure. So that just, it allows me to work or it makes me work a lot harder, right? When you're not giving it up, sometimes people don't wanna give it up, but that's not my audience and I have to remember that, that that pressure of the long game um, is what really works. So yeah, being being a woman online, that that is the hardest part and just combating like, People, mm -hmm. you know, people are always going to have something to say, whether it's good, whether it's bad. I could throw an amazing event and it's like, well, why were the lights off right here? And I'm like, wait, what? Did mm -hmm. we just find something to pick apart? So you just have to find a way to ignore that too. Being human, that comes too. In an era where audiences crave authenticity, mm -hmm. how can brands maintain genuine connections with mm -hmm. their followers while also scaling their mm -hmm. digital presence? Ooh, I feel like I, that's my forte, right? I'm 100% myself. There's no other way to do it than that. Now, of course, we have to be professional. We have to keep things in mind that we are a business. Mm -hmm. So that's professionalism all the way. Um, but at the same time, I give people raw and real me as much as possible. I don't want to live a fake life. Like I don't want every day to look like it's rainbows and sunshine because it's not, right? Especially in business. There are days where I'm like, I could really give this up and go back to my nine to five and be just fine, you know? So, and I want to show people that I want to show people that, Hey, I'm sick too. I'm on a machine sometimes when you're talking to me, that's why, um, even clients now, um, they get surprised when we get on zoom and I'm on a treatment and they see the machine and stuff. They're like, I can call you back. I'm like, girl, I'm in my office. Like, let's just work. But being yourself a hundred percent and showing that a lot of times people just want to talk about it, but don't let others see. But when they see and connect it, they, they trust you. People trust to buy from me because they know, Hey, she's showing up. It's just her. I, I don't see where she would do me wrong or how this would be something that I wouldn't be happy about purchasing or investing in. So how long do you have to be on that dialysis? Um, now it's only four hours. It used to be six and some treatments. If I have a super bad month, it can go up to eight. Do you have to be on dialysis the rest of your life? Or? Until I get a kidney transplant and the transplant is not a cure. So I'll get a transplant. Preferably it lasts the 20 to 30 years that it's supposed to. And then after that, you either get another one or you go back on dialysis. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's no real cure for it. Are you looking for, um, a kidney donor or how does that work? Yeah, so I am looking for a donor, but I feel like I'm not searching for it like other people would. And honestly, it's because I was directed in faith not to. I was directed by God to just let him do it. Um, I'm very much a person that tries to take control over things and do it within a strict timeline. And I had to be firmly set down spiritually. Um, 
and let known, hey, no, this is a journey for a reason. I'm taking you on it for a reason. And I thank God for the way he did it. At first, I was like, why am I on dialysis so long? Like, why well, I got to lose all this weight before I even get on the list, mm -hmm. right? Um, but it was because my story, look at this. Like, mm -hmm. this all came from tragedy. And I'm really, my biggest thing above all of this, above the business, above the money, I just want to help people and really make them feel good about whatever situation they're going through. It does not matter. And even if you have an ailment, if you're sick, whatever, don't be afraid of that. A lot of people are like, you just show your patch. You don't care. I don't mind. Right. I need you to know that I'm a warrior in some light. And we all are. I'm not perfect. I don't want people to see the heels, the makeup and, and lose sight of me being a human being. I'm just Shalena. What is the financial strains of having to go oh, to dialysis? It's a lot. Um, and in the beginning, it was crazy, crazy bad. Um, a lot of people don't understand that 58% of entrepreneurs don't even have proper health care to get diagnosed to go to the doctor. So me personally, I had health care, right? Some of the best. I thought I was a speech therapist. They gave us really good insurance. It did not cover treatments at all, not even one bit. I remember two weeks into dialysis, getting a bill to my house for $38,000 for just two weeks of treatments. And I literally was like, y'all are insane. Like a normal person can't pay this. Um, ended up having to almost advocate for myself because one of the things that makes me really sad, especially within illness and chronic illness you are not told the opportunities the programs the things that are out there i ended up having to get i said well i have insurance why am i having to get this why and when you hear the word medicare medicaid all that you're thinking low income and and yes that's true too and i have no problem you know it, Look, I don't judge anybody. I'm not rich. I'm not living in the clouds. None of that. But it was obscene to me that we were even talking about Medicare, but that is the only thing that would cover my dialysis treatments. So I ended up having to merge my policy with a Medigap policy just to get dialysis covered. Now, under that policy, I have medications. I used to take 40 medications a day. We're down to about 12, praise God. But just one of those medications is almost $800 a month with insurance. Now... I finally, after almost a year and a half to two years of paying it, I advocated and found a grant program for myself that wasn't even in Texas. I had them to bring it here and then advocated for other people to get it for this medication because we need it. It's a binder for phosphorus. If I have too much phosphorus in my system, I could tap out right now. So it's like you can't live without it. But who has $800 a month on 30 pills? That's crazy. Are you, are you ever afraid? Yeah. All the time, all the time. Even I can be transparent with you at Big Boss Brunch. There was a moment a lot of people don't understand at these events. I don't have anxiety, but with 300 people coming at me and everybody's trying to get a picture, everybody's trying to get this, my body gets dense. There was a moment I almost fell out in there and nobody would know because it's like all you see is makeup and dress. But I'm scared. A lot of times my body switches up on me and I don't even know coming here. I was dizzy on the highway. So it's just like those unexpected things. And also the fear of the unknown. Um, it's real, but my faith is so high that I don't succumb to it. But it's there. It's there for sure. I appreciate you being here today, Shalena. We of do course. have to wrap this interview up. Yeah. We like to leave fans, followers, listeners, and supporters with something inspiring, something mm -hmm. empowering, something they can take within the rest of the day, the rest of the week, and all the way up to the weekend. Mm -hmm. What would you like to leave us with today? Um, I just encourage everybody to be, do, and want more for themselves. Go after everything you can think of. And even when people tell you you cannot keep on going, I've been told no so much, and the no's turn into yeses eventually. So. And how do yeah. we find you? Sure. So I am Social Boss. You can find me online at Social Boss Empire, at Women in Wine Houston, at Black Mermaid on YouTube. And yeah, let's connect. I'm super friendly. DM me. I'll voice memo you back. <laughs> we appreciate you being our guest here today on the Amanda Sat Morning Show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time thank and you effort and what me. you're doing in community. Um, hey, guys, look, I'm going to leave you with the same thing I always leave you with. But first, Reggie on the beat, what are you going to leave the people with today? Only you can be you and I can be me. That's it. How we find you, Reggie? You can find me on Instagram at Reggie, but it's spelled differently. So R E G J E E E. I'm going to leave you guys with the same thing I always leave you with be the change you want to see. And if not you, who, if not now, when? This is the Amanda Sap Morning Show on Amazing 102.5 FM. You do good through good station where we're changing lives one listener at a time. Until next time, we're out.